Okay, here's a very quick roundup of the DRO installation. Um, supplied by CBR Electronics, I actually bought it off eBay. 299 Great British Pounds. Yeah. And bearing in mind if I bought something like a Mita Toyo, one of the one scale would be more than that. Getting this whole kit, just under 300, is, I think is okay. Um, from a UK company, okay, we know it's, I know it's a Chinese import, but it's from a UK company with ISO 9001 approval. Fitting was pretty straightforward. It comes with a lathe-specific arm, or an arm for lathes, not specific to the culture, so that went on easily there on the little student. Um, two bolts, nuts behind, I just popped that cover off. And they've got some little jacking screws in the corners so that you can mount them on an uneven surface if necessary. Okay. That was a doddle. Um, the wiring is pretty straightforward. You have to get a good ground, less than half an ohm between the head unit and any of the reed heads. So there's a ground wire going down to the lathe structure that should do that job. Okay, and uh, check out the installation videos for the, the uh, I took a bit of trouble installing the X slide. Um, it was worth it. It's working nice and accurately. Okay, if you're a, if you're a machinist and you're handy with a DTI, you're going to have no problem doing the installation. Um, the kit is not lathe specific, so you're going to probably have to invent a few bits yourself. But you know, most people like doing that. A lot of people throw away the kits and the bits in the kit and, and make their own bits because uh, they can, you know make them absolutely specific custom parts but anyway it took me a day and a half ish to fit it I could do it quicker if I was doing it again so that's that right installing the scale on the back of the lathe was, was fairly straightforward there I haven't mounted the cover yet um, with the bits that were in the kit. The only thing is you'll find if you're doing it on a Colchester, nothing on the back of the bed here is machined or flat, it's all over the place. So you'll have to use angled shims and packings. Uh, you'll have to spend a long time making them up if you want to get a good result. Um, to attach, ooh, I'm falling over, to attach that rear uh, scale, that's the Z-axis scale. Um, Apart from that, not too bad. It just took time. It wasn't anything difficult. It just took time to make packings to go behind it so that it was level, you know, in all sort of directions. So it's mounted vertically. It's parallel with the ways using a DTI like I did when I installed the one on the cross slide. Yeah, check out that video. Principle is exactly the same. Um, it just it just took time, a half a day probably of removing, refitting, levelling, making shims, making packers, generally faffing around to get a good result on that and uh, you've got to do that if you want accuracy and if you don't want to scratch the scales by the you know by the reed head not be, not moving exactly parallel to the scale so it's, there's no way around that. Um, anyone who's a machinist and is, and is handy with a with a dial indicator isn't going to have too much problem with that and uh, there's lots of good videos on YouTube, including one by Double Boost, where he fits one to a Harrison lathe. Uh, check that out, though, and, and mine, of course. They'll get you in the ballpark. Again, that's kind of hard to see there, but there were enough bits of slidey slotted angle plate in the kit to mount the reed head to the back of the saddle here at the top, and then all these all these bits bolted together and the reed head is actually under the scale there um, you can just see it I had to make a slightly angled shim you can probably just see it in there between the head and the plate to get it really straight there's, no, there's nothing lines up with anything else on the back of this Colchester there's no true machine surfaces it's all, all rough cast so it took a bit of work uh, okay what we all want to know I think is the accuracy um, bearing in mind this is a 50 year old lathe I noticed when I was fitting the Z axis I think the saddle of this lathe dips down about 5 thou in its 
sort of sweet spot where the bed is worn. It's got kind of a, a, a concave bed. It's fairly normal on an old machine. 5,000, not too bad actually. Whether it affects the accuracy of the scales, I don't think so. Not much, not that little deviation. Anyway, the first bit of good news is I've just uh, faced off a bit of bar and I call it there, and I've got a flat tool holder, and I can run through the through the you know travel many many times, and whenever I uh, I run it through the whole length of its travel there, up and down, up and down. And whenever I, as long as I bump off reasonably carefully and don't knock anything, don't push the saddle up or anything, I'm getting consistently back to, come on down you go, to one consistently back to zero there. I mean that's, I've done that ten times now. So, uh, well, one thing is nothing shifting around on the installation. Another thing, the scales are, is, it's not missing any counts and the scales are good, so that's a good sign. All right, now I've got myself along. It's an 11 inch micrometer setting standard. And I'm gonna, I'm zeroed there. Okay, I'm gonna just bring you guys around here. Okay, so there's no cheating. Oh, it's gonna hit my, it's gonna hit my camera. It'll wind this out. And we're just, just bring that into contact there. See, I'm touched. I'm touched there. It's just just holding on to that standard. Ten nine 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 point six four tenths, and uh, uh, I suspect there's. A, uh, I've got a little bit of a tight grip on that. I suspect it's. I suspect it's within a couple of tenths again, over eleven inches, which I'm quite impressed with. I'll just put the. Uh, The, I think that's a seven inch setting standard in. Let's see what we get. I'll leave the camera on so you can see there's no cheating here. We just very carefully touch up against that. Okay. Seven inches dead. Okay, um, just, just for fun, bring it back to zero. If I can do it with one hand. Oh, minus two, let's touch again. I may have hit it a bit hard there. Zero. Okay, I think if I. If I bump it, the lathe saddle just lifts a fraction, gives me a couple of tenths error. Also, I noticed when you're working with, one thing you're used to, when you're working with a bit of tool pressure on, you need to make sure the backlash is eliminated from the compound slide, otherwise this can be pushed back. Um, yeah, overall, really impressed with the accuracy. Um, I found it's good on diameter as well. It's certainly better than this 50-year-old lathe. Um, no problem working within a couple of tenths. You know, uh, on on radius. Uh, nobody's going to complain about that, I don't think.